He's all over the state representing disabled American veterans. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Golden Corral on Highway 501 in Myrtle Beach in front of Walmart and Circuit City. We're focused on Military Appreciation Monday to be held this upcoming Monday, the 15th, from 5 to 9 p.m. in partnership with the Disabled American Veterans. And we're visiting with Ernest Stroud, the adjutant for the state of South Carolina. Good morning, Ernest. Thanks Good so morning, much for Greg. coming in. My pleasure. Our pleasure. It is so exciting. Obviously, yesterday, Veterans Day, so many things going on, not only statewide. I know you've been traveling all over the state recently, getting ready for such a big day yesterday. I'm sure it was probably very emotional as well. It was because then you see the best of a community that comes out in the form of parade, the floats, the meaningful floats that we now have. And especially as we look at the ongoing war, we recognize that what we are doing in Iraq, what we're doing in Afghanistan may be controversial to some. But from my perspective, it's not controversial to the Iraqis, the ones that are receiving the help. The Afghanistan, they have had their elections, and for the first time in their lives, they have been able to go and elect someone to represent them instead of being the dictatorship. That was reflected in yesterday's parade. Mm -hmm. as well as all other wars, the wars mm -hmm. from the beginning until now. It was so overwhelming, obviously, last week to have wrapped up in a civil manner, even in the U.S., the elections uh, 10 days ago, seven or eight days ago. It was amazing to see how the country really wrapped around and to even to hear Senator Kerry talk about now it's time to wrap around uh, President Bush. I think that he did this. He did it gracefully. It was something that we certainly did not want to prolong the way it had happened with the first election of the president. And now it's a time for healing. It's a time for looking at those programs that make sense to all of us. And yes, Bush, President Bush, needs to reach out in directions perhaps that he hasn't before. I see everything as a positive. I think the stock market reflects that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was surely exciting last week to see it jump up like it did. Real quick about yourself. Ernest, are you originally from the area? I was born in Lancaster, South Carolina, Lancaster County, which is a county that borders North Carolina. We're closer, in fact, to Charlotte than we are to Columbia. Uh -huh. And I went into the, uh, the Air Force following, immediately following high school. It was either be drafted or go as a volunteer. I chose the volunteer route, went into the Air Force, and almost immediately within six months was in Korea served in Korea for a year, and in that time frame, I was involved in the first jet aircraft that were ever used in combat. Is that the right? The F-80 and the F-86. Mm -hmm. And every year, we have a, an annual reunion of that group, and we still have, in fact, just had the reunion uh, in uh, September, and we had some 130 people at that reunion. So that was my background. That got me out of Lancaster, South Carolina. Oh, yeah. I then stayed in during Vietnam, served on the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Forces staff in a, at a Marine base in Hawaii. I never set foot on Vietnam soil. Huh. I saw the results of it. I saw those things that took place in the 66, 67 time frame. They were not pleasant. I watched as those who came back from Vietnam were in newscasts and so forth. They were spit on. They were called baby killers. They were called everything. Mm -hmm. I was blessed in the respect that I came back on a, an air evac flight. I had sustained injuries in Korea, had fought medical discharge for, well, at that point in time, about 16 years. Mm -hmm. And finally, injuries during NAM forced me out on a medical retirement. But I was blessed in the respect that I went to vocational rehab, which is a part of the VA system. If a person is injured in the service and they're injured in such a way that they cannot pursue that 
employment that they've been involved in. Mm -hmm. They go to a vocational rehab course. They may go to a private college. They may go to a state college. In my case, I went to the University of Denver. Mm. Graduated with a BSB, BSBA with management science as a background. I then became involved in computers, the early days of the computers. Really? Sort of grew up with the, the old PCAM or punch card equipment. Mm -hmm. So as time evolved from that, I stayed in, worked in the Department of Defense for another 18 years, and retired from the Pentagon as an Air Force Intelligence agent in 1988 and moved back at last to South Carolina. 17 years ago. I did this in 1988, yes. How exciting, 16 years ago. You know, when you think about reasons to return to your home state, to the Palmetto State in this instance, or for so many of our viewers in North Carolina and the Tar Heel State, right. and of course that has such a very large infusion of military personnel as well as obviously South Carolina, it's fascinating. You know, I'm so glad you mentioned some of those experiences. Obviously, we were in that instance where, golly, just yesterday, Bob Fogner was with us talking about yesterday's. Oh, Bob. Uh, Good man. And of course, last this past Tuesday, when he was with us, talking about the veter Vietnam veterans leading yes. the parade in Conway. Great idea. Which kicked off at 10 because, as you said, so oftentimes they were spit on and called baby killers and otherwise. I mean, this is 8 million plus folks. I mean, an incredible number of folks to yes. think about that. For folks like myself, born in the early 70s, and so many folks uh, at my age who really don't understand that significant, I mean, the significance of that, it is incredible. Yes, it is. Mm. They, and I have said this so many times in the meetings that we have in the DAV, American Legion, VFW, Vietnam Veterans of America, wherever I speak, wherever I go, I always make a point of welcoming those that weren't welcome properly when they return. And Korean veterans were the same. I came back from Korea. I came to an organization that didn't have a single Korean veteran there. Mm. So they asked where I had been. Even some of the military were almost in the dark on what Korea was about. Mm -hmm. So certainly if they were, the civilian populace was also. And it was worse during Vietnam for the simple reason Vietnam extended over such a very long time frame mm -hmm. and had a lot of, of problems and problems that was aired by then TV was a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody could watch the evening newscast and see what the news media wanted them to see, mm -hmm. just like has been the case in the recent elections. Right. Same you, process, same you, thing. You know, we're in a scene, you're visiting the VA's website from 2000, and the figures that they used from 2001, still living veterans from Korea, from the Korean War, numbers almost 4 million. That's the true state. 3.9 some That's million. Right. And to think of those folks from a war in the early 50s being around and having shared those memories, but of course so many of them having gone back in like yourself into Vietnam, and even potentially some of them, I'm not sure what the age requirements are, potentially some of them having gone or no to uh, to Iraq in the early 90s. Are, are there age requirements in the military? There would be an age requirement, but if you were very young when you went into Vietnam, it could possibility that you could be called back. In uh -huh. fact, a doctor or a baby was a psychiatrist uh -huh. is now 67, uh -huh. and they have act, asked him to come back into and be trained to go to Iraq. Wow. This was in the news within the past three weeks in the state news. Oh, Lord, that's fascinating. So to answer your question, there is a, a, an age rule, but if there is a need for that specialty, they waive that age rule. In his case, prime example of that. That's fantastic. Share with the viewers a little bit. Of course, this, this past Monday, Jim Cutler was with us promoting this upcoming Monday's event. Okay. Military Appreciation Monday. I think it's been going on between a partnership with DAV and Golden Corral. Golly, for uh, almost five years now. It yes. kicked off five years ago in Virginia right. Beach and then four years ago with all their stores uh, nationally. Share with the viewers a little about how that's been received and uh, not only with disabled American veterans, but it sounds like all veterans. Well, when it's promoted and it's advertised in the paper, you'd be surprised at the number of participants that will come in and share that meal. And at the same time, it's a two-pronged two thing. Not only is the Golden Corral providing us a place to display what the DAV, Disabled American Veterans Organization, is about, what we do in the community. And if one wants to give donations, then this is fine. We sell nothing, 
but we give advice. And when they do this, we have people who are not members of any organization, such as a veteran service organization. In our case, most of what we see is American Legion, mm -hmm. DAV, VFW, Vietnam Veterans of America, Purple Heart, uh, Blinded Veterans Association, Jewish Veterans Association, uh, others that are smaller in size, mm -hmm. but they are the major ones that you see. But we have people that are now on active duty are authorized to come in and have that meal too because they are veterans. Right. What we're doing now is making certain that those who are returning from Iraq or in Afghanistan are in a community that they know of this. So on that night, Fort Jackson just happens to be one of the largest areas that has a Golden Corral near a military installation. Oh, wow. And it's amazing. I don't know exactly what the figures are, but it's in thousands mm. of meals that is given to those that are veterans. Oh, yeah. It's a great, great concept. And it certainly, it betters and, and gives the Golden Corral a name. I know this. When I go, for instance, to Alabama or Georgia, and my family, myself and my son, and mm -hmm. who is retired military, and his wife, who is also a retired military, when we go out and take the children to dinner, we go to the Golden Corral. Wow. It takes us back. So you give to us that meal. Mm. But we, in turn, and the families, remember that. This and we is, come back for it. Yeah. Ernest, this is 467 franchise and company-owned locations in 39 states. I think I saw in the four years that they've been doing it nationally, they've served more than 700,000 veterans. Think of the dollars. Yeah, it's, an, it's a magnificent commitment It is on a their commitment, part. and it's a great commitment. And I applaud every Golden Corral in this nation that's doing this to continue to do it, allow us to just be there as humble servants in order to do what we do that day. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the news coverage, because without that, it doesn't, the word doesn't get out. It's similar to what we just went through with getting the vote out. Right. right. It's exactly the same process. Yes. Without the data being known, then you have nothing to go to. Ernest, share with the viewers a little bit about uh, disabled American veterans and obviously the aspect of you traveling around the state as adjutant and exactly what some of those responsibilities are. Again, of course, with yesterday being Veterans Day, I'm sure you were all over the place. Uh, it had to be. We had a Columbia parade. I think there was 106 or 108 entries mm. or floats or however you might refer to that mm -hmm. in that parade. And following that, we went to the National Public Radio and did a program in the afternoon from 3 to 6 mm -hmm. over on Greystone Boulevard in Columbia. Mm -hmm. And this was done by Brian Kuriak, who is a National Service Officer Supervisor in the Columbia office. Mm -hmm. And he's a monitor for this. And several of us went over there and continued the theme of the day there. All around the state, everyone, practically every community will have a Veterans Day Parade. Mm -hmm. Ours in Lancaster was done on the 6th because of so many other commitments on the 11th time frame. Mm -hmm. And when we do this, we see people that literally will cry mm. as certain elements will come through. And especially when we see the POW MIA float or car, whatever they might be in, come through, nobody hesitates for one instant to stand and pay respect to that car, whether or not it has a flag. Mm -hmm. But it's so great to watch as you go back to the reviewing stand, for instance, and as a parade moves its way down the street, every element that has an American flag on it, people stand for it. Wow. They stand at attention while it goes past. That tells me that they remember Veterans Day for what it is. Great outpouring throughout the state. And this is military members and, and not obviously Every, civilians. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. everybody. Because wow. when we stand, they feel obligated yeah, to. Yeah, sure. How exciting. That was an amazing day yesterday. <laughs> and for so many it, events uh, that you all are involved in, and obviously the American Legion is so, so dramatic. Everybody. You know, you know it just, we come together. The, the service organizations have done two things in the past couple of years that have made a difference. When we go to Congress and we talk to our congressmen, every year, in the spring of the year, mm -hmm. about our programs. We stand now together when we talk about funding for VA hospitals. We talk mm -hmm. about funding for 
uh, medicines and so forth and budgets within the VA hospital. Now the major service organizations stand shoulder to shoulder in order to push this program to say this is what we need. Mm -hmm. We're not standing apart. The American Legion, DAV, and the VFW being the largest are in one accord on what we do. And it's great to see this in every community. Mm -hmm. In the parades you see it. When you are, are looking at the floats, there they all are, mm -hmm. one after the other, some all together on a float. Up in Lancaster, we had them together. Is on that a float. right? All three service organizations. How exciting! And it, it works because there shouldn't be animosity among no. us, no. especially. Of course not. Absolutely. I mean, if there's animosity in the community, we try to solve that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, to see the see the numbers of DAV alone, and obviously, I'm talking, and you're wearing your cap, past commander, 98 to 2000, life member, and obviously now adjutant. To see a million two hundred fifty thousand members of DAV. To think you all are entirely supported by contributions, you're not a government entity, no government funding. How do you all go about reaching out in the community of folks who may not understand exactly what veterans go through, some of the help that are needed, particularly for disabled American veterans? We have 42 chapters in South Carolina. They're located almost in every county. Right. As you can tell, there's 46 counties. We oh, yeah. have 42 chapters. And what we do, we meet on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Most of us, uh, we are allowed to meet less frequently than that if our charter so decries, but we must meet in order to uh, make contribution and, and to follow our own constitution. Right. What we do is advertise. We have newsletters that goes to everyone. We advertise in the papers when we meet. Mm -hmm. When we have a fun drive, such as a forget-me-not drive, mm -hmm. Walmart is gracious to let us work outside there. Uh, establishment. Great. They, there will probably be some here at Walmart. Right uh, behind us. May Absolutely. have been yesterday. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. May have been sure over were. Veterans Day. But anyway, the community itself is aware of what we are and who we are. And we have good leaders within these chapters. Mm -hmm. And when they meet, they may have, let's say, a quarterly meeting with the district commanders. Mm -hmm. Then they invite the state officers to come down, and they may even invite a local speaker to come in. Mm -hmm. What we are is nonprofit, but also nonpolitical. Mm -hmm. We cannot endorse a candidate. Right, right. We can tell anyone what the candidate does or does not do, mm -hmm. but we can't not endorse one. Now, can civilians attend these meetings? These are open to the public, or no? You... They are not open to the public. Okay. When we have an open house or something of that nature, they are. However, I will say this. We have the DAB Transportation Network Van Program. I've seen it. And this is in 19, we have 19 of them now. Mm -hmm. And at the time that we start advertising for funds for this, being nonprofit, we do advertise in the papers. And churches, mm -hmm. sewing groups, senior circle centers, and mm -hmm. things of this nature mm -hmm. want to donate to this. Oh, yeah. And it is a tax-free donation or a charitable type donation for that van. And we replaced the van at roughly 140 to 150,000 miles because of just the pure nature and the frequency of use and right. the, the, and the maintenance goes up as the miles go up. Sure. So these things, when they are, are purchased, they're purchased by the individual chapters, mm -hmm. be it Myrtle Beach, right. be it Florence, be it Lancaster, mm -hmm. be it Beaufort. They are then donated to the serving VA in their area. Mm -hmm. From here, Myrtle Beach, the vans go to Charleston. From Beaufort, they go to Charleston. Mm -hmm. From Florence, they go to Columbia. Mm. So they, they serve the nearest VA hospital within their area. Over oh, yeah. on the western side of the state, those in Greenwood and Aiken, Augusta, they all go to the Augusta VA hospital. Is that right? Yes. Okay. okay. So that way we're interfacing with the civilian world. They see these vans. Right. And though we don't use them in parade because they're not available for a parade, mm -hmm. they are to carry patients only. Right. Then we still get that to the civilian community. Though. So we're visible. We're visible. Absolutely. There. I saw, saw uh, the DAV van early this morning. 
as I pass between the U.S. Army Reserve and the VA there on the former Air Force Base where my right. studio is located. Right. I'm right behind the U.S. And Army Reserve. And you know Reserve. that they're going to be opening that clinic and expanding that clinic. That's exactly just, right. Even as we speak. I remember when Congressman Brown and others were in town. I think you were here. I were there. So I many others close by were there as they were uh, breaking ground to expand. Yes. And obviously, having completed that, we've seen some beautiful new lines in the parking lot. Oh, yes. And, uh, some oh, nice yes. drives. saw that last there. Sunday. Did you? Yes, you they there. had them blocked off. Oh, yeah. But I knew that they were new. In fact, they were working overtime Sunday. They I were out doing some were. painting on the side of the building as I drove through there. It is a spectacular what they've done on the former Myrtle Beach Air Force Base right. and obviously so many bases that have had to be reconverted. Obviously, you drove through there a very right. recently. And to see that commitment, of course, you know, one of the most exciting aspects, if you'll just break down, we've only got a few minutes, Ernest, if you'll break down Monday evening for, for viewers, as you say, young folks who are either currently serving or, or weren't aware of Military Appreciation Monday, obviously one of the things that Jim mentioned on Monday, no ID required. It's entirely on the honor system. You don't have to be in uniform. You just come in and you tell the cashier between 5 and 9 p.m. And all the accoutrements, including beverages, here available at Golden Corral. It's something that you can't beat. When you get to the Golden Corral, what you'll see is a canister that will be about this big around, I believe. Right. It's got a little hole in it. Mm -hmm. And what it is is a donation canister. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that we are selling. Mm -hmm. We are, if you want to talk about membership or if you want to talk about programs, we'll hand out some program materials that the DAV has printed, National DAV, mm -hmm. takes care of printing this. That will be given out. And other than that, we're, we're not there for mm -hmm. the purpose of bugging anybody or bothering anyone. Right. DAV is grateful for what Golden Corral is allowing us to do. Oh, yeah. And as long as I have been involved in it, I've never seen anyone turned away. It is the honor system. And you do get exactly as advertised, whatever you want to eat, whatever Golden Corral has in it. Right. And the family members are not uh, free. It is just a military member. Right. So that that is a distinction, mm -hmm. and please don't come expecting to feed a family of seven. Right. It's the military person or ex-military person, former military person, that is being served mm -hmm. free, mm -hmm. and it doesn't make any difference if you're National Guard, or if you are reserve, mm -hmm. or if you're active duty, mm -hmm. retired, or still in uniform. Mm -hmm. It makes no difference. It's a great program. I would encourage everyone to think a second time about where our nation is and what's taking place in Iraq. And when you see someone and recognize this, the veterans that's coming back now from Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, they're going to have mental problems, many will, because they have been in danger from day one there. Unlike Korea, unlike Vietnam, we had a front. We had somewhat of a line that we could almost draw in the sand, 38 parallel, for instance, in mm -hmm. Korea. Generally, we didn't see North Koreans south of that. If they were in a MiG, of course, we shot them down. But the point is this. We had some sanctuary, so to speak. If you were south of that 38 parallel, there has been no such parallel, no such sanctuary in Afghanistan mm -hmm. or Iraq. There's danger there. So when we see one of those coming back, if you see them in an airport, go over and talk to them. If you know one's coming back between now and Monday, go over and invite them to go and corral. Invite them to come over with you. Bring them over. Mm -hmm. It's a great program. Those are great words, Ernest. We've got a minute, and you think for re reaching out to folks, obviously you're wrapping up the week. Jim Cutler kicked off the week. You're wrapping up the week, and surely a lot of focus has happened on Military Appreciation Monday uh, in 72 hours. But the, the aspect for disabled American veterans, if there was a, a plea to try to encourage folks to think about joining or making donations, is there a phone number statewide, or is, could people contact you to, uh, to make a donation or otherwise? Greg, let me just give you the, the toll-free number for the South Carolina DAV as 1-800-794-1260. Okay. Our email is scdav at microbyte.net. Okay, okay. Our department website is www 
dot davsc dot org. Right. Any donation that you want to give, I would suggest giving them to the local chapter, mm -hmm. and we're advertised in the paper. If there isn't a chapter in your town, address it to Department of South Carolina Incorporated, P.O. Box 5317, West Columbia, South Carolina, 291715317. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for a, a beautiful day here. I want to thank the Golden Corral. I want to thank this organization, this Golden Corral in Myrtle Beach. It's a new place. It is, yeah. When I left here in 1954, I was at Myrtle Beach, Air right. Force Base, right. before it was a full base. Yeah. When I come back down here, I'm amazed at what's here. I this know. used to be pine. This used to be deer land. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it was but, until very recently. But yeah. now it's a land to come. It's, it's a place to come to for a meal. I hope that every veteran that sees this program takes advantage of this. It's a once a year good program. Absolutely. Ernest, thanks again so much for being with us. Thank you. Absolutely. God bless. God bless America. Sure. Yes. And God bless our viewers. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Ernest Stroud coming up next. The event is Military Appreciation Monday. The date is Monday, November 15, 2004. The time's from 5 to 9 p.m. at any Golden Corral, 467 locations in 39 states in America in partnership with disabled American veterans. If you're currently serving or if you've ever served in the U.S. military, you get a free buffet, including beverage, from 5 to 9 p.m. at any area Golden Corral. We want to thank Ernest Stroud, the Department Adjutant for South Carolina, for being with us today. Get out there, support veterans. Thank you.